Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this first lesson, or oh, sorry, welcome to this physical science lesson on Wednesday, this public holiday. Um, I hope you've had a very good day and that you're ready to do some science. So we were doing vertical projectile motion and in the last lesson we spoke about equations of motion and we spoke about general graphs of motion, whether it be vertical projectile or not. In this lesson what we're going to do is we're going to go through graphs specifically to do with vertical projectile motion and then we're going to move on to going through some questions exam questions that are based on um, basically we're going to look at both exam questions that will cover both equations of motion and your graphs of motion okay so your displacement versus time graph is very cool because if you look over here when you throw a ball up I don't know if you guys realize this but when you throw a ball up it doesn't come go up and then come straight down because of the movement of the earth it actually does a beautiful little parabola okay and if you see this you can see that this is exactly the same shape I apologize for the bad drawing as a basic displacement versus time graph of a vertical projectile okay so therefore the displacement versus time graph is one of the easiest graphs to draw because it basically is showing us exactly what happened okay so easy peasy right now the velocity versus time graph this is slightly more complicated okay remember that the a gradient of velocity versus time graph the gradient gives us delta v over delta t which is going to give us our acceleration and since this is being accelerated by funny enough g the acceleration due to gravity um, this is going to be constant so the gradient of velocity versus time graph is going to be constant but now what is important is to remember that this is a vector so if we choose up as positive then it means that we're going to start with a positive value okay so let's say for example this guy throws this ball up with an initial velocity of say two meters per second okay what's going to happen the ball's going to go up 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 but as it's going up it's slowing down because the force of gravity downwards is actually accelerating it downwards then it gets to this point here and it has a velocity of zero and then it changes direction and starts speeding up. So that's exactly what's happening here. Yeah, we start off with an initial velocity of two. We've chosen up as positive. It goes up, 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 up until this gets this point here, this which is where V is equal to naught. Okay, so that's TM at that point there. And yeah, it starts speeding it up again, but it's speeding up in the up direction so what I do to help myself okay is I in pencil very lightly will write up and down because that helps me analyze what's going on with these graphs that's up and this is down and then this velocity unless there's huge amounts of friction which generally there isn't this velocity is going to be identical to that velocity but it's going to be in the opposite direction so this is going to be minus two so therefore that value there is going to be minus two okay right now let's look at an acceleration versus time graph okay I chose up as positive right which means that the acceleration is going to be downwards and the acceleration is always therefore because it's always downwards it's going to be negative and the only force acting on this is gravity therefore the acceleration is going to be g which is the same as minus 9,8 so that is acceleration versus time graph okay so those are the basic velocity position and acceleration versus time graphs for uh, vertical projectile motions so let's try a couple of exam type questions and see if we can work out how to do these okay it says a stationary rocket is on the ground okay and it's launched vertically upwards after four seconds the rocket fuel is used up and it's now 225.6 meters above the ground at this instant the velocity of the rocket is 112.8 meters per second 
The diagram below shows the path followed by the rocket. Okay. Ignore the effects of air friction. Assume that G does not change during the entire motion of the rocket. In other words, assume that the acceleration due to gravity does not change. And it says at which point P or Q is the rocket in free fall? Now let's think about this. The definition of free fall, which I spoke about yesterday, was that the only force acting on the rocket was the force of gravity. And what they said here is up to point P, this rocket was and has would had force, it had fuel. So it had a energy coming from the rocket, from the fuel source. Q, at point Q, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. So therefore we can say that Q is the place that it had was under free fall. Now it says write down the direction of the acceleration at point P and point Q. The acceleration at point P and point Q. Okay. Let's think about this. At point P over here, do you agree it is speeding up? Okay, the acceleration due to gravity is downwards, right? But the rocket is speeding up. It's going from zero to 112.8 meters per second. So the direction of the acceleration at point P is upwards, okay? But the direction of the acceleration at point Q is downwards because the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. Right, now it says, Take upward motion as positive. Okay, so upward motion. Use equations of motion to calculate the time taken from the moment the rocket is launched until it strikes the ground. Okay, so do you agree that from here to here, from this point here to this point here, the rocket is under a force due to the fuel? Okay. Then from here, and I'm going to color it in, all the way to there, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. So we can actually work out this time in two steps. We can work out step one, the time it takes to get from here to here, and step two, the time it takes to get from there to there. Okay, so let's do that. So for step one, do we agree that the initial velocity is going to be zero? No, we don't know that. But we do actually. But anyway, it says the stationary rocket is Yes, so the initial velocity is zero. The final velocity they tell us is 112,8. They tell us that the displacement is 225,6 meters. And they tell us the time is four seconds. So do we even have to work that out? We don't. This time here is four seconds, right? But for the second part, what do we need to know? Hmm. Okay, so now for the second part, we're going from here to here. The initial part, initial velocity is what? The initial velocity, choosing up as positive, is 112,8 meters per second. The final velocity we don't know. If you gain grade 12s, if you tell me that the final velocity at the ground is zero, I'm going to be very upset and I'm sure your teachers will be upset as well because if you're telling me that the final velocity is zero, what you're effectively saying is that this rocket has hovered about the ground. It didn't actually hit the ground, okay? Because the reason the rocket is falling and it's falling faster and faster and faster and the reason it stops is because the ground gets in its way. It is not because it suddenly changed and decided to be zero. Okay, right. We know the acceleration due to gravity is minus 9,8 because we chose up as positive. And our displacement, now this is interesting, our displacement is going to be minus 225,6 meters. Let's think about this. We start here and we end up here. So we end up that distance, which is 225.6 meters, behind where we started, okay? So therefore it's a negative velocity, negative displacement. And we wanna know the time. Okay, 
So let's look at this. We've got the four seconds for the first part, so that's easy. So let's look at our equations of motion. We've got Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. We've got Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta X. We've got delta X is equal to Vi delta T plus a half A delta T squared. And we've got delta X is equal to Vf plus Vi over 2 delta t. We do not have the final velocity and we don't have the time. We want the time. So everything with final velocity we can cross out. So do you agree we're going to use that equation there? Okay, so delta x is minus 225,6 is equal to the initial velocity we're going up. It's 112,8 t. Okay, plus a half times by minus 9,8 t squared. Okay, so therefore we can say that's minus 225,6 is equal to 112,8 t minus 4,9 t squared. So I can rearrange this, it becomes 4,9 t squared minus 112,8 t minus 225,6 equals zero. And now in order to solve this, we're actually going to have to use the quadratic formula, which says x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so the whole of this is A, the whole of this is B, and the whole of that is C. So I'm going to change colors so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm substituting in instead of X, we've got T. So T is going to be minus, minus 112,8 plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is minus 112,8 squared. Um, minus 4 times by A, which is 4,9, times by C, which is minus 2 to 5, 6, all over 2 times 4,9. Sure. Okay, so we now need to get out our calculators. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going to clear it. Hmm, let's do it on this side, I think. And let's take it up. Okay, so we're going to go minus 4.9. Oh, sorry, let's try again. Okay, so we're going to go minus bracket minus 112.9. Close bracket and let's add the first one. So it's going to be plus, and then we've got a square root bracket minus 112.8, close bracket squared minus 4 times by 4.9, close bracket, open bracket minus 225.6. Close bracket all over that is going to take you back to 9.8. 9.8. And then we move it over and you say equals. And that becomes 24.87. So T equals 24,87 seconds. Now the question I have to ask you is do we need to work out the other one? And we don't because of the fact. Well, actually, let's just show you. Okay, so let's go all. So let's go find my calculator and I'll show you why we wouldn't have to work it out. So let's do it. We've got, again, we're going to clear it and then we're going to go this and we're going to go minus times minus a plus. I'm just going to go 112.8 and this time we're going to subtract. Subtract the square root of bracket. And there we've got 112.8 squared 
8 squared minus 4 times I just realized I need to close my bracket. Sorry, otherwise it's not going to work. Close the bracket. Squared. There we go. Minus 4 times 4.9. Close bracket. Open bracket. Minus 225.6. Close bracket. All over 9.8 to the end equals and that's a negative number that's minus 1.85 so that's minus 1.85 and do you see can you see why i didn't even shouldn't have even bothered with that i shouldn't have bothered with that because you cannot get a negative time we at the moment have never been able to work out how to go backwards in time so you cannot get that answer so therefore the answer so far is 24.87 but we've not finished because they want to know what time it took from the moment his rocket is launched until it strikes the ground. And this 24.87 is just the time through the free fall. So what do we need to do? We need to add the four seconds. So therefore the total time is going to be 28,87 seconds. Okay, right, let's move on. So here's a totally different question, and it's a question that I found in the exam paper. It's a very nice question, so we're going to go through it. It says a hot air balloon is rising vertically at a constant velocity. So here's your hot air balloon, and it's rising vertically at a constant velocity. When the hot air balloon reaches a point A, a few meters above the ground, there's point A, a man in the hot air balloon drops a ball which hits the ground and bounces. The ball goes doing and up. Okay. Ignore the effects of friction. Now it says the velocity time graph below represents the motion of the ball from the instant it is dropped until it bounces for the first time. Okay, so it's dropped until it bounces for the first time. So these are bounces, right? So now it says the upward direction is taken as positive. So I'm immediately going to write, remember I said to you in pencil, I would write that this is up and this is down. So this bit here, okay, its ball is doing what? It is going up and there it is coming down and then something's happening here and then something's happening there. So this motion is actually not accurate. Okay, let's think about that. First, it says write down the magnitude of the velocity of the hot air balloon. And your velocity of the hot air balloon, it says the hot air balloon is rising vertically at a constant velocity. And when the hot air balloon is at point A, the man in the hot air balloon drops the ball. So what is actually happening and why I say this drawing is wrong is because what is actually happening is that this ball is when it's part of this guy, when this guy is holding it in the hot air balloon, the ball is traveling upwards. So the initial velocity of the ball is upwards. So what's going to happen is it's actually going to do this. The ball is going to go up a little bit then it's going to come down and bounce and then go up and then come down again. Okay, and then it may bounce or whatever. Okay, but that's effectively what happens. It goes up. The reason it goes up is because initially it is part of this hot air balloon. So it has the initial velocity that the balloon has. So it's going to, when I let it go, it's still got initial velocity upwards. Goes up, slows down. This guy doesn't see it going upwards. Why doesn't he see it going upwards? Well, because he's got a constant velocity going up. Okay, it's constant, right? But what happens to the ball? The minute it lets, the minute the man lets it go, it has an acceleration down towards the ground. So it starts slowing down. So the man sees the ball moving away from him. Okay, he thinks the ball is dropping, but actually the ball is going up a little bit with the velocity, initial velocity is going to be the same as the hot air balloon, and then it slows down. So this at the point where the man drops it, this velocity here 
is going to be the same velocity as the velocity of the hot air balloon. So therefore, we can set 588 meters per second upwards, well, the, what the magnitude, is the velocity of the hot air balloon. That's the velocity that the balloon started at, and that is the velocity with which the balloon was going up. Now it says calculate the height above the ground from which the ball was dropped. Okay, they want the height. Now, please note, it says use information from the graph to answer the questions that follow. Okay, now there's, that's sneaky. They're being very, very sneaky. Because if they say use the graph, they're implying Okay, if they just say use the graph, do not use equations of motion, then you cannot use equations of motion. You have to use the graph. If they say use information from the graph, then it's kind of on a little bit of a borderline. We're not quite sure if they mean just use the graph or they mean use information from the graph and you may not use equations of motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this without using... I'm going to show you how to use it. You do it using the graph. In other words, we're not going to use equations of motion. Okay, so what is actually happening here? Like I said to you, there's a bit here where it goes up and then it comes down. And they want to know the height above the ground from which the ball was dropped. So do you agree, if I drew this big, it would go something like this, where this is, okay, it's going to go something like that. With this point here, is the 0.6 okay this point here is this point here where it is starting at zero and then it's going to travel back down and then it's going to hit the ground okay and this happens at 2 comma 6 there that's where it hits the ground so this point is its turning point now what do they want they want the height above the ground from which the ball was dropped so they want that height there. They want the height from which it is dropped. So do you agree that this height here is the height it went up? Up. And all of this is the height it went down. So if I take the height it went up and I subtract all the height it went down, I will get the height from which it was dropped or the height that it started at which is when the ball was dropped okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to work out the whole of this and subtract this little bit here and we're going to find out exactly how high this ball was balloon was when the ball was dropped so we're going to use the graph so we need to use the area under the graph because the area under a velocity versus time graph gives you the displacement. How does that work? If you think about it, we know the velocity is equal to the change in displacement over change in time. Therefore, displacement is equal to velocity times the change in time, which is effectively the area under the graph. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find this area here. So the area that that shape is a triangle. So we're going to go basically um, a half times that distance there, which is 2 comma 6 minus 0 comma 6, times by the height, which is 19 comma 6. And you don't have to worry about pluses and minuses because we've already decided what we need to do. Minus a half, because that's also a triangle, times 0.6 times 5,88. So now what we need to do, this is a half times by 2 times by 19,6 minus a half times 0.6 times 5,88. So what we need to do is pop this in our calculator. So let's do that. So, okay, so we've got 19.6 minus bracket 0.5 times 0.66 times 5 point, I don't know why this isn't showing, 5.88 close bracket equals 
that does not help us. It becomes 17.84 meters. 17,84 meters. And you remember that when you're doing science, you always round off to two decimal places. To two decimal places. Also, what's important in grade 12s, especially if you're in the IB system, you need to realize that you need to be using a comma for your decimal, not a full stop, okay? So you need to be using a comma. Um, right, sorry, let me carry on. So this here is 17.84 meters. So that is that height there. From there to there is 17,84 meters. Right, now, what else do they ask us? Next, they say calculate the time at point P indicated on the graph. This is point P. Hmm. Okay, so that's actually not that difficult a question because what is happening is, do you agree that at 2.6 it bounced and it's gone up and it's come down? That's what's happened because yeah, the velocity is zero again, which means that that's a turning point and yeah, it's stopped. So that there is 3 comma 2. So do you agree the total time taken for this bounce? is 3.2 minus 2 comma 6, okay, which is 0 comma 6 seconds. So what goes up must come down because the only force acting under the force of gravity, that means that that time there has to be halfway between those two. So we can say, well, that's pretty easy. That's 3 comma 2 minus 2 comma 6. Well, there's a better way, divided by 2. So we can do that on our calculators. We can say 3.2 plus 2.6 equals divided by 2 equals, and that's 2.9, 2.9 seconds. The time that this is at is 2,9 seconds. It's halfway between these two. Okay, now. It says calculate the maximum height the ball reaches after its first bounce. So it wants to know how high did it bounce. And it says calculate. So from that, I'm thinking I can either use equations of motion or I can use my graph. Okay, so while I'm erasing this, just have a look at the question and see what information you have. You know the velocity that it hit the ground with, okay? You know the velocity with which it bounced back. Okay, do you agree that it hits the ground at this velocity? It hits down here at 19.6 meters per second, but it bounces back up at 2.94. So it's coming back up here at 2.94 meters per second. So we know the initial velocity is 2,94. Now grade 12s, if I was doing this strictly fitted um, if it said use the graph and not in use information from the graph, then if it said use the graph, like I said, we would have to do the area under the graph. But I've already shown you how to do that. We know that length there. We know that length is a triangle. You can do it. I'm now going to show you how to get the height of this using equations of motion. So we know that the initial velocity is 2.94. We know the final velocity is zero because otherwise that wouldn't be a turning point, okay? Then we've got the time it took, which was what? It was naught comma three seconds. Okay, acceleration is minus nine comma eight because it's acceleration due to gravity, which in this case is down. And they want the delta x, they want the displacement. So you can use any equation here. I'm going to say, let's pretend that we're not sure about this. Maybe we weren't quite sure how to get the 0.3. We've worked it out. They gave us 2.94. There it is. We know the final velocity is zero. We know the acceleration to gravity is minus 9.8. So I'm going to use these three here to work out my delta x in case I mess up with this 0.3. Okay. So in case, I'm going to use vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta x. The final velocity is zero minus the initial velocity, which is 2,94 all squared, all divided by 2 times minus 9,8 equals delta 
x. So let's find out what that is. So we're going to have minus, okay, let's just clear this first. So we've got a minus bracket 2.9494 nine four bracket squared divided by bracket two times negative nine point eight point eight close bracket equals and that's 441, which we can use IST button for is 0,441 meters. So delta x is equal to 0,441 meters. Okay, I'm just going to show you what would happen if we use the graph, okay? So if I use the graph, I'd be looking at this triangle here. So remember that we're looking at the area under the graph. So area is a half times base times height is the area. So we know that it's a half times the base area is 0, 0,3 times the height, which is going to be 2,94. So if we pop that in our calculator, we should get approximately the same answer. I say approximately because it's going to be rounding errors. So it's going to be 0, 0.5 times 0, 0.3 times 2.94 equals hmm, identical so it's 0 comma 441 equals 0 comma 441 meters there you go okay and it really doesn't matter which way you do it they haven't said do not use equations of motion so um i would say you can do either of the two now it says calculate the distance between the ball and the hot air balloon when the ball is at the maximum height after its first bounce. Okay, so let's just remember this height here is 0, 0,441. Okay, 0, 0,441. Right, so now I need to erase stuff, but unfortunately I don't want to erase everything because I want the information that's there. So that means you just have to watch me very boringly erase. I really must see if I can get a better setup. I don't have to do this. Okay, right. Now, they want the distance between the ball and the hot air balloon. So you might think, well, that's really easy. We know what the hot air balloon was. Initially, it was 17.84 meters. Okay, that's where it was originally. Okay. But and now we know that the ball bounced up and the maximum height that the ball bounced at was 0,441. So you just subtract the two. But if you think that you're actually forgetting something very significant, you're forgetting that the hot air balloon is going up with a constant velocity. It is keep, kept on going on. So for the whole time that this ball was going doing up to there, this hot air balloon was traveling up. So in other words, from here to here, that whole time the hot air balloon has been traveling up at a constant velocity and the constant velocity was 5,88 meters. So do you agree that we could say, well, in that case, the hot air balloon, the hot air balloon has been traveling with a constant velocity of 5,88 meters per second for how long? Well, up to the point that this ball is at its highest after the bounce, which is going to be 2.9 seconds for 2,9 seconds. Okay, so we can find that height. We can say, well, that's very easy. Then h is just going to be 5,88 multiplied by 2,9. So we need our calculator out and we go 5.88 multiplied by 2.9 equals 17,052. 
two meters, so it's 17 comma zero five. So that equals 17 comma zero five meters. Right, so what are we saying? We are saying that the heart balloon has continued upwards for another 17 comma zero five meters while this ball has been in the process of bouncing, okay? So therefore the total height of the heart balloon is going to be its initial height when it dropped the ball, which was 17,84 plus 17,05. Okay, so what is that? Five and four is nine, and that's eight, and that's a four, and that's 34. So that's 34,89 meters. That's how high the hot air balloon is going to be at the point when the ball is at the top of its bounce. But the top of bounce, it is at 0,441 meters. Therefore, the distance between them is going to be 34,89 minus 0,441, which equals what? Let's get out our calculators again. So you've got 34, 34.89 minus 0.441, which equals 34.45 meters. So it's 34,45 meters. Hmm, that's a nice question, hey? So you had to think about the fact that the heart air balloon was continuing to go up at a constant velocity. So you had to realize that. And you had to realize it was doing it for the whole time that this ball was in the air, okay? Up to the point that they've asked you to work out. Also, you needed to remember that the heart air balloon was a certain height, 17.84 meters above the ground initially. Okay, so you need when the ball was dropped over here at this point in time, the heart air balloon is 17.84 meters above the ground. So you need to add this distance, which is the distance the heart air balloon traveled while the ball was bouncing. Okay, then also we needed to work out the maximum height, which we've done already, of the ball and subtract the two to get the difference. And that's how we find the distance between the ball and the hot air balloon when the ball is at the maximum height of the first bounce. Right, now, okay. Great tools, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave this question on the screen. I'm gonna talk you through it and then we can maybe do a couple of minutes of just discussing it. And then because of the time and where we are at this lesson, I'm actually going to leave it and I'm gonna challenge you to do this question Try it for yourselves, okay? And then, well, let's see how far we get, okay? Ball A is thrown vertically downwards from the top of the building. So ball A is thrown downwards, okay? And this is 80 meters high, and it's thrown down with an initial velocity of 12. At the same instant, an identical ball B is thrown upwards at a velocity of B. So it's exactly the same instant. Ball A and ball B pass each other after 2.135 seconds. So they pass each other somewhere. We don't know where they pass. Let's just say they pass each other there. There's A and there's B, okay? And the time it took to do that was 2.135 seconds, okay? That's the time it took to pass each other. And it says ignore all effects of air friction. So the first thing it says, give the direction of acceleration of ball B while moving upwards. The only force acting on ball B while moving upwards is the force of gravity. So what is the force of direction of acceleration? It is downwards. Acceleration is downwards. Give the velocity of ball B at the moment it passes ball A. Okay. Now, what you need to realize is that ball A and ball B are both dropped instantaneously, okay? I mean, ball A is dropped at exactly the same time that ball B is thrown up. It's exactly the same time. And they say that they pass each other after 2.135 seconds, which means that ball B has been traveling from 2.135 seconds when it passes ball A. 
So what do we know? We know the initial velocity of ball B is 30. Now what we need to do is choose up or down as positive or negative. And I'm randomly going to choose up as positive because of ball B going upwards. The final velocity, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. But the acceleration due to gravity is minus 9,8. The time is 2,135. And we want Vf. Okay? So do you agree we can use the equation Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T, which is going to 30 plus minus 9,8 times 2 comma 135 and we can pop this in our calculator take this across and we can go well this is 30 plus bracket minus 9.8 times by 2.135 close bracket equals Okay, so it becomes 9.077, which is just 9.08. 9, 08 meters per second. And remember that they've just asked for the velocity, which means you need to give a direction. So it's upwards. And why is it upwards? Because I chose upwards as positive, and this is a positive value. Now it says calculate the distance between ball A and B 2.5 seconds after it was projected. Okay, so they want to know how far apart they are after 2.5 seconds. Okay, so we know that the total distance between them is 80 meters. Okay. Um, we know the initial velocity of ball A, we know the initial velocity of ball B, we can work out the time. So do you agree with the time? We can work out how far each of these has traveled during the 2.5 seconds. And then or what the displacement of each of these is. And then we can work out how they relate to each other. So grade 12s, right, this is the point at which I say, right, we've now run out of time. I would like you to try this question here. Okay, so if you're watching the video right now, I would say, I mean, as in at 6.41 p.m., I would say pause it um, and then keep this on your screen and then try this question for yourself. Either that or take a screenshot and then try it for yourselves later. Okay, but try this question. Calculate the distance between ball A and ball B. I'll give you a hint. Ball B might be coming down at that point in time. Okay, so you need to look at the displacement of ball B not how high it is. Well, I suppose how high it is is a displacement. But you need to think about the fact that ball B might be coming down at that time. I'm saying it is. You just have to be aware of these things. Right. That's it for today. I hope you have an awesome, awesome evening. And um, I hope you will join me tomorrow when we will carry on with questions on vertical projectile motion and then move on from there. Have a great evening. Bye.